Uh, we're going to handicap one other title fight, and this is the Cuban-born amateur star uh, who is now a featherweight world champion in Robesi Ramirez. He will fight on this card a uh, contender for his crown, Satoshi Shimizu. Don't I got to confess, don't really know anything about Shimizu. Now, Ramirez uh, has been good. A recent win over Isaac Dogbe for him. He's a featherweight world champ. All right, so, Dan, give me some quick handicapping with Ramirez, an overwhelming favorite. He is some 30 to 1 on the bet U.S. line. No value there whatsoever. So it's more about how does Ramirez win, when does he win, et cetera. So what, do you, what are your thoughts here? Ramirez is one of the great amateurs of all time. He is a two-time Olympic gold medalist from Cuba. When he won his second gold medal in the final, he defeated a close fight, but he definitely won the fight against Shakur Stevenson. That tells you the kind of talent he has. Uh, a tremendous, tremendous amateur fighter. Uh, Shimizu, his opponent, is a two-time Olympian from Japan, but he's older. He's in his late 30s. He was an Olympian back in 2000 and uh, was it 2008 and 2012. I'm not sure why he's only had about a dozen professional fights, but he's like 37 years old right now. He does have the one loss, which was by knockout. Um, but he's getting this opportunity. But he's a, he's a in Japan, he's a famous guy because of being a two-time Olympic fighter. Um, you mentioned about Ramirez uh, when he defeated Isaac Dogbe. That was for the vacant uh, WBO featherweight title. That was a big win for him. And the thing about Ramirez, he over, has overcome so much, not only in the, in the incredible story that it took him to defect from Cuba to the United States, which has been well chronicled. It was just a, a wild way that in all the things he had to go through to get settled here. Soon after he settled and he turned pro, uh, I think there was still a lot of stuff going on with his life and everything in terms of all the, the chaos in terms of uh, getting settled in the United States. In a shocker, huge shocker, he lost his professional debut. That is yep. like mind-boggling. And a lot of people, that was a hugely debilitating kind of loss that, you know, people kind of were down on him big time. But to his credit, he came back. He got himself back together. He changed his team. He's now working. Uh, you know, he changed trainers. Uh, he's with the, the legendary Cuban trainer, Ishmael Salas, who is also the trainer for several other quality fighters. Anyway, uh, he got himself together. He hasn't lost since, and he frankly hasn't really uh, even been on the verge of losing since. And then he has that big win over Dog Bay, and he won the title. And so he's a hot fighter right now. He's got confidence. He can, he can punch. He's a great boxer. He's got speed. Uh, he's really coming into his own as a pro. You know, sometimes with these fighters, uh, especially Cubans, because of the way that they're taught, it takes time to adjust from being an amateur to a pro. Robesi Ramirez has finally seems like over the last few fights has made that adjustment to, to fighting in a more professional style than just a hit and run and, and just try to tap and, and, and score a point. It's different in the professional ranks. So he goes over there with a lot of confidence, uh, excited also similar to Stephen Fulton about going to Japan to experience the, the culture and all that that goes along with it and defend his title. And in Shimizu, he's got a name guy among the Japanese fan base, as I mentioned, two-time Olympian, not that much experience against the top guys as a professional, uh, has a knockout loss. It, it just feels like this is, they're giving him this opportunity, but they're kind of feeding him to the wolf, you know, at this later stage of his career in terms of his age. Uh, hard pressed to pick against Robes Ramirez in this spot. Uh, 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 just a, a, a special kind of talent. And I think he gets the job done. I mean, I know we don't have an over-under on the fight. Uh, Correct. That right. line was not posted. But I picked him by a knockout. He's looked, you know, he didn't stop Dog Bay, but he stopped some other fighters in the past. Um, he had a great knockout against Abraham Nova, who was a good fighter. That was in the title eliminator a couple of fights earlier. Um, I think he gets the job done. I think he stops Shimizu, who's, uh, you know, the clock's running out for him. Don't get mad at me, but I'm in agreement here. I also like the knockout. We don't have the official bet U.S. over under. The belief would be it would be something like nine and a half or ten and a half rounds. That's typically what they are for these 12 round fights. I would not be surprised if Ramirez gets to him before the 10th round, before the 11th for sure, but before the 10th round. But we don't have that line. So you and I are going to lock in on the KO prop for Robesi Ramirez, the Cuban star. This is immediately before the Fulton in a way fight early Tuesday, U.S. time, early Tuesday morning so we're both on the knockout laying minus 120 on the bet us line here for ramirez to move on um and and quickly give me a quick 30 second answer what's in his future do you think if he is able to get this victory as a unification fight maybe on the horizon and we start seeing bigger things out of ramirez late 2023 early 2024 it's hard to say he can get a unification those are hard fights to make i think he'll win if he wins this fight he'll come back to the united states top rank will feature him Probably, uh, you know, in another fight before the end of this year, he'll main event, uh, you know, on ESPN or ESPN Plus, and they'll, they'll find, uh, you know, a top contender. Obviously, Top Rank also is the promoter for the IBF featherweight champion, which is Luis Alberto Lopez. He's going to have a fight scheduled for September, so it won't be him that's next. 
Um, so I don't, I can't sit here and tell you it's going to be a unification fight, but you know, they'll do their job and they'll match them up. They'll try to build them up a little bit bigger. And, and, uh, but I do think ultimately if, if Lopez continues to be successful and is going to stick around at featherweight and Ramirez is the same way, that seems to be an inevitable fight because they're both with the same promoter and they're both fighting in the same weight class and they both have a world title. So that would be a fight that would be, uh, very interesting to make and, I think maybe down the road it could happen, but I don't think I see that coming up in the next fight. But he's got to deal with Shimizu first. All right, fair enough. And again, our live audience is growing and growing. A lot of you have just found us. We're going to be here for a few more minutes with Q&A, which we're getting to right now off the Robesi-Ramirez discussion and Shimizu, the Japanese uh, opponent. Let's go.